Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I will be talking about a condition called herpes zoster ophthalmicus, HZO, or more commonly known as shingles. This is a condition that can cause a rash, usually on one side of the face. It can also involve the structures in and around the eye, and that's why it becomes important for eye care practitioners. So please stay tuned to learn more. Herpes zoster ophthalmicus targets the fifth cranial nerve, which is one of 12 cranial nerves, which are basically contained within the skull. The fifth cranial nerve is responsible for providing sensation to the entirety of the face. It has several branches, and those branches are divided into V1, V2, and V3, which you can see from the picture on screen now. If an individual has had shingles once, then the risk of them getting it again is increased as the virus isn't completely eliminated from the body and it usually lays dormant within the body until it is reactivated. There are several reasons why reactivation may occur. The various reasons can include advance in age, increased exposure to UV, trauma, or being immunocompromised. Fortuitously, to help with the one key risk factor being advanced in age, there is now a vaccine available for patients who fulfill the criteria to receive it. In terms of how these patients present to an eye care practitioner or even a primary care physician, will include a classical history of a burning, painful sensation along one side of the face, um, if the eye structures are involved, particularly the cornea, then it may involve ocular discomfort and blurriness of vision. In addition to this, patients may also describe generalised symptoms of feeling run down, fever, fatigue, malaise and or headaches. What is also evident with this condition in and around the skin is these vesicles which do pop eventually and display a classic crusted appearance. A detailed eye examination is warranted, particularly paying close attention to the skin around the eye, the periocular area, and then the front surface of the eye to ensure that it has not been breached by the virus. Also, the virus can penetrate into deeper layers and so therefore a comprehensive examination is of fundamental importance. A key clinical test to perform in patients whom you suspect to have this condition is checking corneal sensation because it is classically reduced. Usually the diagnosis of herpes zoster ophthalmicus is a clinical diagnosis and a laboratory test is not required. And classically in terms of management, patients will be started on um, antivirals and this may involve oral antiviral tablets or it could also involve topical antivirals to treat surface disease of the eye. Once the surface of the eye has adequately been treated and there are no breaches within it, then steroids are started to try and prevent scar formation and to aid with the resolution of the condition. In terms of pain relief, patients are usually signposted to their primary care physician as this condition can be extremely painful and it is important that they are on the correct analgesics. If herpes zoster ophthalmicus is promptly diagnosed and treated promptly, then the chances of long-term damage to the ocular surface are reduced. What should be borne in mind, however, is that through multiple attacks over many years, the ocular surface, namely the cornea, can become compromised and show considerable signs of scarring and therefore this translates as poor vision for the patient. In terms of when one sees a patient with herpes zoster ophthalmicus, it is important to counsel them on the management protocols and principles, namely treating the acute infection, 
getting them sufficient analgesics on board, but importantly also advising them on the recurrent nature of this condition. That's it for this video on herpes zoster ophthalmicus. We've covered what herpes zoster ophthalmicus is, we've covered how it can affect the eye, the type of symptoms the patients can experience and the broad principles on how it is managed. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, click the bell icon and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, thank you.